Stephanie Walter and I'm a second year chemistry graduate student at Northwestern University. And I'm Franz Geiger. I'm a physical chemist here at Northwestern University in the Department of Chemistry. There's recently been a surge in uh, the use of surface-bound DNA for material directed synthesis and biodiagnostic applications. And while the molecular recognition properties of DNA uh, are really important and well understood in bulk, they're not as well understood at the surface. So the field of nonlinear optics has helped to understand more of these surface-bound properties. We've really been able to use nonlinear optics to study the orientation and kinetic and quantification of DNA on the surface. So when you think uh, take a look at this molecule here, this is our DNA strand adenines and thymines that have come together forming a duplex, and this is in fact the molecule that we've been working with for the last uh, three to four years. And you can see over here in yellow are charges, those are the phosphates, that's the phosphate backbone, and we can really titrate those and, and uh, detect them directly uh, using what we call an optical voltmeter uh, with second harmonic generation. Then vibrational sound frequency generation gives us information about the sugars okay, on the backbone, as well as the nuclear bases, which are probed by second harmonic generation electronic resonance enhancement. And so what we've been seeing is that the single strand, which is disordered, believed to be disordered on a surface, displays quite little electronic uh, resonance and also chirality changes in the vibrational and electronic resonances. But when the duplex is formed and the molecular recognition event has occurred, there are big enhancements in the chirality information, especially when we go on electronic resonance and on vibrational resonance. And so it turns out that these are wonderful tools and some frequency generation and second harmonic generation to track hybridization events in situ and in real time. Well, working with DNA on a surface is a very complex system. And so uh, being able to interpret the data that we've uh, received and be able to decouple the different vibrational modes and the different interferences that may occur has certainly been a challenge. But uh, really, we want to be able to combine theory and experimental work to really bring out all that we can uh, understand about this system. It's also important to realize that this is a charged polymer. And of course, charged polymer and polymer-polymer interactions are important in materials uh, characterizations. And uh, performing those studies directly on a surface, uh, in situ, in real time, and without the use of labels is important for uh, developing new materials applications. So this really spans the entire gamut from fundamentals through biodiagnostics and biomedical applications, as well as material science. And these are, of course, three important aspects of uh, what we do as scientists in general. Yeah, the uh, new diagnostic tools are absolutely fascinating. When one thinks about, for instance, Alzheimer's, which is uh, diagnosed post-mortem, uh, which is, of course, tragic, uh, it would be wonderful to perform a diagnostic uh, device, develop a diagnostic device early on that can be used when a person is in their 20s or in their 30s. And then right now, of course, the disease won't be uh, cured uh, at this point if we don't have the combination of how a person behaves and what their lifestyle is. Uh, that, that can be tracked over decades until the disease develops, or most, more, more hopefully not. And uh, that is something that has been going on here at Northwestern, specifically in the Nanoscale Science and Engineering Center, uh, as well as the Cancer uh, Institute that we have here. So uh, one thing that's fantastic about the molecular recognition processes that are unique to DNA and oligonucleotides is that you can really use them as an erector set to build any kind of structure that you want. So uh, colleagues of ours here at Northwestern in chemistry and the material science have developed uh, these interactions and uh, capitalized on them to build structures that have before not been uh, built and uh, that is unique, that's been uniquely enabled by nucleotide nucleotide interactions. So DNA is certainly an ideal molecule to study in this realm and we want to be able to capitalize on the really uh, selective and sensitive recognition properties of DNA and be able to maybe identify sequences that are important for target applications and determine um, where we can use these in terms of gene chips and identifying uh, mutations that can lead to disease and really pushing the, the next uh, DNA biosensors and chips. So uh, think about a doctor who goes into uh, seeing a patient and then with a, a handheld device is able to scan that person's uh, propensity for developing diseases. Uh, this is something that's extremely important for developing over the next 10, 20, 30 years new medical uh, applications 
for combating those diseases, for controlling them. And this is exactly where this is, work, uh, is going. Uh, well, we certainly want to thank the General Physical Chemistry for allowing us to publish our work and also providing a, a great database of other work that we can draw from and uh, really supplement. Yeah, it's a great journal. I, my first paper uh, was published in the Journal of Physical Chemistry, and now it's great to see that uh, Steph's first paper is going to be published in the, the Journal of Physical Chemistry. Uh, letters. And I think the letters format is fantastic for quick turnaround and uh, it really gets the information out there very quickly and what uh, Stephanie has been doing with uh, summarizing the work by others, much of which has appeared of course in the Journal of Physical Chemistry, that is a really important step for pushing science further. Thank you.